today, some of you be, might be wondering who this young man is. Where is he from? What's his agenda? And some of you, once they hear that, they hear that I'm a Syrian, might have felt a little worried and asked, are we safe here today? I want all of you to reflect on your thoughts once you hear the word Syrian. My name is Basil al-Hajj from Damascus, Syria. I achieved 97% on the standard scientific Syrian exam, which allowed me to enter to one of the top pharmacy schools in my country. I attended for two years, but things did not go as expected. The political situation has changed. Political and religious extremism started to be present in my neighborhood, in my school. I was asked to join to defend my religion. I was about to fall into that lie. But because of the injustices that I have seen done to people of my own nation, I refused. And so did many members of my community. We had to pay the price. Mortars started falling on my neighborhood, randomly. A lot of innocent people were hurt and killed. And when the extremist group entered my neighborhood, my house was raided. I had to leave along with my father, brother, my grandfather who had Alzheimer with hundreds of thousands of people. I lost hope for a while in achieving my dream, but someone in this community stepped out of their preconceptions and acted to save my future. Someone stepped out to offer a, a scholarship for Syrian students to continue their education, and that was the University of Evansville. And because of this opportunity, my future was saved. So I'm here today in the United States to achieve my dream to become a successful person. I'm here to tell you the story that millions of men, women, and children want to say, but they can't. I'm here to encourage every one of you to step out of your preconceptions, to act in the lives of those who need you. I'm here to make a difference. And do not say that I don't have any preconceptions of my own, because we all do, and I do. And just like my grandma once said, the first step in solving your problem is to acknowledge that you have it. Just like some of you might have felt a little worried when I told you I'm a Syrian, humans tend to judge those who are different than them based on the preconceptions that are planted, planted in them by those who are ignorant or those who are knowledgeable but are benefiting from that ignorance. We have two choices to deal with these preconceptions. We can let them control us to allow the worst in us, our fears and hate to act in our lives and in the lives of those who need us the most. And we can control them to allow the best in us, our love and compassion, to act in our lives and in the lives of those who need us the most. Educating yourself is the most important part of the change journey. We cannot defeat our preconceptions if we are ignorant. Learning about cultures, lifestyles, religions can be mind-expanding. For example, you might learn that Syria is the place where the first written language on Earth was developed. And you might learn that Syria has about 35 religions that were living together peacefully for thousands of years. And you might learn that most, that most of the members of ISIS are actually not Syrians, and that, are, that Syrians are facing terrorism 
on behalf of the whole world and still facing hate and prejudices and restrictions everywhere they go. You can also educate others to create the domino effect where changing the preconception of one person can change the preconceptions of many others known by that person. And do not tell me that it's too much to change the whole world, because I tell you it's not. All of you know how small a drop of water is, right? But one, when many small individual drops of water get together, they create a rainfall, a waterfall, an ocean. Small individual acts, when added together, can change the whole picture. The Syrian people who are now scattered around the world need your support and compassion to become better individuals. According to the United Nations, there are about 8 million Syrian refugees who are displaced outside of Syria. And about half of the population who are still in Syria are dis uh, it's displaced internally. So most of the refugees who left Syria have ended up in refugee camps where there is no proper health care, no proper education, no jobs, no water, no food. They have ended up there. And half of that population is children. A whole generation in the refugee camps is in danger of a growing up ignorant and uneducated. And if you tell me that ignorance and the lack of education is not a problem, I tell you, you got a problem. Ignorance is the first enemy of the United States and of the whole world. Ignorance is the first enemy of the United States and of the whole world. And if we are leaving this generation to grow up uneducated, and, and, and ignorant. We are leaving our world with millions of possible victims of terrorist and criminal ideologies. Whatever we plan today, we are going to harvest tomorrow. So let's look at the fruits of our decisions that we are making today about changing our preconceptions and supporting those people. Picture a child and who is in a refugee camp today. After having been left, forgotten, and ignored, that child will grow up to endanger our societies, whether we like it or not, everywhere we are. And picture that same child, after having been supported and educated, that child will grow up to become a fighter against hate, terrorism, and fears just like you are right now. You've already started your journey in, of change by being here today. By being here today, you have educated yourself, supported me in my mission, and I, I want you to pick it up from here and teach yourself and learn more. Thank you so much for listening to me.